Uh, my name is Rob Mills, and I'm the current president of the IWCC, the Independent Web Series Creators of Canada. And I'm a writer, web series creator, director, puppeteer, and a whole bunch of other things. Mm. Not just puppeteer. Let's not haze over the fact that you were a big part of Fraggle Rock. Yes, I was. I was the biggest thing in Fraggle Rock. I was uh, Junior Gorg. I was inside the Junior Gorg costume. <laughs> you have no idea how big a deal this is for me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, good. Good. I'm glad. Uh, well, I think every kid of my generation, anyway, we're huge fans of Fraggle Rock, and and uh, so you you provide a, a a legacy where kids like me grow up, and now they're very giddy to be interviewing you. Oh, well, good. Yay. <laughs> Love it. Um, so we're not here to talk about Fraggle Rock. It makes me a little sad. Oh. But I'm very excited to talk about what we are going to talk about, which mm -hmm. is the IWCC. I'm very excited about the IWCC, but I want you to explain to the audience a little bit about it. What is it and why, why do we need the IWCC? Okay. Well, the IWCC started out uh, from a, a series of meetups. So there's a Facebook group that we've got, the Toronto Web Series uh, Creators. And we uh, started having uh, meetups. We would find a pub and people would join and gather together there. Jason Lever and Jonathan Robbins, I believe, started that up. And it just kept growing and growing. And the, the numbers of people who were participating, sorry, I dropped my thing. Numbers of people who were participating online as well just kept growing. And we started looking at each other going, you know, we need some kind of representation out there that's going to um, uh, have a voice for this whole community. It's, uh, it's very difficult to deal on levels of policy or funding or anything like that on a one-on-one -on -one basis as a singular creator. And so to, to go to any of those uh, authorities, as they were, uh, to request changes to how things are being done, uh, both with respect to uh, uh, funding, but also uh, telecommunications policy, but also... Also, uh, just getting uh, awareness uh, for the whole community and what the, what we're doing, the work that we're doing. We realized uh, we needed some kind of um, singular voice or at least a collective voice. And so we decided, well, let's set ourselves up as a nonprofit association. Took a while. Um, it's a bit like herding cats uh, because everybody is fiercely independent and rightfully so. But uh, we managed to get a core group of people together and set up uh, the IWCC. And uh, we're now in the midst of uh, uh, starting up uh, endeavors like the TO Web Fest. Uh, we've got all sorts of uh, different uh, benefits that uh, members uh, can uh, can get. Everything from uh, deals, uh, discounts on equipment and services, but also uh, c continuing education, not only amongst our own community about uh, different ways of doing things and different ways of distributing your work, but also um, awareness of the audience uh, at large, letting them know about uh, this community and the amazing things that they're creating. Now, uh, web series is a, is a fast, vastly growing industry, and um, I, I'm kind of curious to know that this kind, of, this kind of community building, is this generally unique? Did you find templates elsewhere that you could draw ideas from? The, um, IWCC started out, I mean, our whole community started out very organically, uh, and it was just people coming together and sharing resources and knowledge and experiences and wanting to be able to uh, help each other out. And... That way it's a bit different than uh, other communities, like in, in Los Angeles in particular. Uh, it's very, very competitive because that's an industry town, and their their background is all in film and television and, and that uh, very uh, industrialized model of uh, creation of uh, content. Uh, whereas we were just their individual artists, individual creators who really wanted to get their own work done, and so we're very... Um, supportive of each other. Um, I see that our community is doing exceptionally well and I want to know if that has something to do with the support we get or whether it's just a good driving independent spirit that's happening there. There's uh, we, we are seeing TV shows come out of web shows. Mm -hmm. um, there's uh, the Canadian Screen Awards now acknowledging that there's web series and categorizing them and giving them as much weight as television or film. And um, and there's we have uh, organizations like the IPF who put money in the pot to actually have them made. Where mm -hmm. do you think we are in the spectrum? Are we at a good starting point? Can we improve? How can we improve? Well, I think there's always room for improvement. Uh, certainly, I think the the 
growth that we've seen and uh, the quality that we've seen of the work coming out uh, isn't directly related to any kind of external support, whether it's the IPF or the Academy or, or uh, any governmental organization, governmental funding. It's really been strongly independent. Uh, a lot of these shows, when they were first starting out, people were financing these things out of their own pocket. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, a lot of credit card action going on to, to do these things. People are doing crowdfunding and a bunch of different things. But just as there are uh, so many different kinds of shows, there's so many different kinds of business models that everybody's pursuing. So not everybody is intent on making a TV deal. Mm. Uh, that's, some, that's the brass ring for some people. For others, it's like, ah, don't want anything to do with it. Strictly the web. Mm. So you end up with, um, as there are just uh, the varied uh, independent creators and varied genres of shows and types of audiences that they're going for, it is... Uh, it, it, it's that difference and that sense of community that's actually driven this stuff. The IPF, it's great. They've come on board. They've funded a, a number of really, really good shows, and people have been able to take advantage of that. They've got limited resources. There's only so much support they can give, only so many shows that can benefit from that. Canadian Screen Awards, great. It's good to, they're getting that attention brought to the work that we're doing. We've been around for a while longer than what uh, you know, before they jumped on the bandwagon. Uh, so the driving force behind all of this stuff is the individual creators. We're the ones in our direct relationship with our audience that is making this stuff happen. And I think that's going to continue to be that way because it's a very uh, innovative uh, form of, uh, of production and of creation. And it's, uh, you know, we're, we're leading the charge, the, this whole community. And uh, I think everybody else is playing catch up, realizing, oh, this change is happening. Yeah. I tell you what I find really exciting about web series, whether they be Canadian or international. What I love is that, I mean, you mentioned on your board, there's Jonathan Robbins and Jason Lever. They both have web series that that are not, you couldn't put on television. You know what I mean? Exactly. I mean, you can put them on television. It's just, you know, I don't know, you know, are TV audiences ready for that? You know what I mean? Well, it's, I think the TV audience is ready for it. I don't think the broadcasters are. The exactly. broadcasters have a very different sensibility of what they think will play, and they like to play it safe. And again, they've got that limited range of time they can allocate shows to. And that's the great thing about making stuff for the web. You've got an audience that's out there that's really wide-ranging, and they can watch this material in Anytime they want. Yeah. Now, I want to know why, where your interest is for web series. What, what drew you to that aspect of the industry? Because you've been, you was it, you were executive director for CB. Uh, see kids. I was, right? an I was an executive producer for Kids CBC, and uh, prior to that, I ran a company called Radical Sheep Productions. We produced uh, children's shows like uh, Rufus the Dog, Big Comfy Couch, a uh, whole bunch of other things. And prior to that, I'd been a writer with Sesame Street and a performer with Sesame Street. I worked with the Muppets for many, many years as a puppeteer. Uh, I've directed for other people's shows. I've worked in the broadcast and film industry for thirty years. Yeah, and, you basically and, shaped my childhood, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I've warped your mind. Um, At least I know my way. alphabet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good, good for you. Good for you. Um, no, it's, I mean, I, as I say, I've worked in that the, the the industry for a very long time and enjoyed it, and it's, I've done very well by it. At the same time, the freedom that comes when you first experience the freedom of working on the web. You don't have to go hat in hand and beg for permission to do the show you want to do. You can quite literally look around and say, okay, I've got a camera. I've got some friends. I've got lights. Let's put on a show. And you can. And nothing to stop you from doing that. Obviously, the more resources you've got, the larger productions you can do. You know, all of those things expand. But that freedom, that ability to say, okay, I want to do this as an individual creator. I don't want to have to ask permission. I'm going to green light my own project. That's really enticing. As a creator, That's it's very addictive too because once you've had a taste of that, you don't want to go back to the old ways. <laughs> now, uh, you've got something really exciting coming up for the IWCC, which is the TO Web Fest. And yeah. that is happening May 9th to 11th mm -hmm. in Toronto at the Harbourfront Centre. That's correct. And yep. I want you to tell us about it and what we can expect from it, because I'm really excited about it, but I, I, I want to know what it's going to look like. Is it going to look like a Comic-Con? What's it going to look like? 
It's going to be a very interesting thing. I mean, Harborfront is a great venue for this, and we're very thankful for their support. The uh, They've got a great theater that's there, so we'll be screening these shows up on the large screen, which is always fun for the creators themselves to be able to see their work with an audience like that. And just everything just seems bigger. Well, it is bigger, but it's just like, wow, holy smokes, what an impact. So the, we'll be screening a lot of shows, uh, not just Canadian shows, shows from around the world. We're getting material in from Marseille, Atlanta, uh, I believe Austin, L.A., New York. Um, I think there's wow. stuff coming in from Hong Kong, Australia. Wow. We've got, yeah, we've got entries from all over the place. So it's, it's really going to be a, a good representation of uh, what's going on out there. Our, our own communities uh, across Canada are going to be strongly represented but in addition to those screenings, there will, of course, be panel discussions. We'll be talking about the, the nuts and bolts of the business of it, um, the future of uh, web series, where this is going, how it's been changing uh, the traditional markets and, uh, and how people's viewing habits from uh, one singular screen to many multiple screens in mobile, uh, all of those aspects uh, of the work itself will be discussed in, in a variety of forums uh, there's going to be showcases of other materials that people will be having. Uh, there's going to be a little industry section where uh, people will, who have, are offering different services, uh, everything from, I, I believe, Actor is going to have a, a setup there with going to, you know, some of the other service providers, equipment providers. A whole range of people are, are going to be showing up. So it's going to be quite a mixed bag. There will always be something going on for people to see. And it's going to be uh, it's a, just a short number of days, but we're going to pack a lot of that in. And it's going to be, it's, we're, I'm really jazzed about it. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah. It's, it's kind of odd because, you know, you can see this stuff online anytime you want. But so the idea of a festival is a bit odd in that way. It's like the festival is always there. It's always ongoing. It's always online. But it's, it's really nice to be able to get this stuff together in one venue and celebrate it and have everybody in one place and sharing their ideas, very much like the regular meetups that we have, but on a much larger scale. And I always find I love these types of events because I learn a whole about a whole lot more other things than I wouldn't by simply surfing online. Exactly, exactly. It's a, it's a, it's a really wonderful opportunity to have your eyes opened and also to, to meet people directly face-to-face, -face, meet, the, meet the creators. Yeah. Well, we want you to stay in touch. We want Definitely. to hear all about what the IWCC is doing. Keep us posted right up till May 9th to 11th on the TIA Web Fest. We're going to be making lots of noise. You'll hear from us. <laughs> And we will share your noise. <laughs> oh, thank you. Good. Spread the word. We will. We